Hello ladies and gentlemen, in today's video, I'll be going over on upgrading and maintenance on a Lenovo ThinCentra M32 Embedded Server. So let's get right into the video. This is a Lenovo ThinCentra M32 released on 2013 as an embedded server. The ThinCentra that I have came with a dual core into a Celeron, 2GB of DDR3 RAM, no storage, but they originally shipped with quote-unquote 16GB SSD and Intel graphics, HD graphics to be exact. Of course, my model is a somewhat top configuration as you can get worse such as lower end processors which is a 32-bit, but literally mine came with a 64-bit which is slightly better, but performance won't change at all since this is in a better server and not a PC. So of course, I won't be expecting the performance to be blazing fast. You may be wondering how much I pay for it and where do I got this machine? Well, I got on eBay for, wait for it, $10 with free shipping. Which in all honesty, that is a huge bargain to be honest. Of course, the thing center did not came with a charger, nor storage, which is okay with me since this is not too hard to do as it's pretty much an easy thing to do. So enough with the chat chat and let's start doing some replacements, upgrading and maintenance on the machine. Here are the following parts and maintenance I'll be doing today. A 2.5 Crucial BX500 120GB SSD A single stick 4GB Samsung DDR3 RAM Wi-Fi USB dongle A power supply And lastly, RTEC MX4 Thermal Paste when upgrade any laptop or desktop, always turn off the system and remove the power adapter, so no power is on the system. What I like to do most of the time when I'm working on internally on any electronic machine is I hold the power button for about 30 seconds to remove any electric discharge on the machine. Turn the machine where you can see all the I.O. ports and you will see two screws located at the top of the I.O. ports. Using a Phillips screwdriver, remove the two screws holding the top panel of the machine. Once all the two screws are removed, what we want to do is remove the top panel. This is pretty easy to do as it will take you around 5 seconds to do this. All you have to do is slide the panel upwards and, and lift the panel up. And from here, we have access to the RAM, storage, coin battery, CPU, and etc. The first order of business is to remove the old thermal paste from this machine and adding fresh thermal paste to the CPU in order to prevent from overheating or frying the CPU. But in order to get access to the CPU, we must technically remove the motherboard, which technically I mean tear down the whole system as the CPU fan is located at the bottom of the motherboard. Using your Phillips screwdriver once again, remove all the 5 screws holding the motherboard in place. And keep the screws at a safe place like what I'm doing. Once all the 5 screws are removed, we then want to remove the motherboard. This part is a bit tricky as we do not want to damage the motherboard. So what you want to do is lift the motherboard and at the same time wiggle it and pull the motherboard gently towards you. The tricky part is the back of your ports getting stuck on the chassis, but with a little patience, you will remove the motherboard slowly and steady. Flip the motherboard over, where you can see two huge metal shields. This is where one of the CPU is located. Now, I will be really honest. I don't really remember as where is the CPU located, but both of these will need a fresh thermal paste soon. On both of the metal shields, remove the four screws. Once the screws are removed, then you can remove the metal shield and here we have access to the CPU. Well, one of them, but it doesn't matter as we are still going to add thermal paste on both of them. Now. What I am going to do is a bit unprofessional and I will have so many backlash about this, but eh. 
The next step here is to remove the old gunk of thermal paste on both of the CPU and the metal shields. In order to do this, you are going to need alcohol and a microfiber cleaning cloth to remove the old thermal paste and add new thermal paste. As alcohol is a non-conductive liquid to electronics, unlike water, but unlikely me, I do not have alcohol to do this, nor I will be crazy to add water to the cleaning cloth to remove the thermal paste. So I will just leave it as is and add new thermal paste, which to me, I feel bad to even do this because the whole joke of doing this is to remove any old thermal paste to the CPU to prevent overheating, but hopefully that is not the case. Once fresh thermal paste is added, we then want to put the metal shields back together and install the motherboard to the frame. FYI, when installing the motherboard to the frame, make sure to align the motherboard ports to the IO ports at the back of the frame in order to have an issue of the motherboard not fitting. Then screw the 5 screws to the motherboard. Now let's get to the fun part. Let's install a new storage to our machine. For my choice I'll be using a used crucial SSD. You can buy a new SSD if you'd like to, but I want to keep the cost low as possible. However, there is a reason why I chose this SSD over something else. If you do not pay attention to the machine's storage drive, the M32 does not take any 2.5 SSD, M SATA drive, M.2 drive, nor a small mechanical hard drive. What this machine uses as storage is called a DOM card. Finding one of these drives are a bit hard to find and a bit expensive with the price. And what do I mean by this? Well, the DOM card costs only 8 bucks, But the downside is that you are only getting 8 gigabytes of storage. And by 2022 standards, 8 gigabyte is way too low for today's standards. And not even 32 gigabytes would cut it. Nor will I be able to install Windows or Linux at that low of a storage. Now, we can do the manufacturer way, or we can do my way, which is buy this 2.5 SSD. Didn't I mention a 2.5 SSD is technically incompatible with the system? Well, yes, but actually no. You see, what I want from this SSD is the internal of it. I want the module from the inside, and I care less about the case since all I want is technically the module. FYI. If you don't like the SSD brand I am using and decide to use another reputable brand for your storage, then I'll be a little cautious if I was you and do a little more research before buying your choice of SSD. The Crucial BS500 module fits perfectly on this machine, as it's almost the same size as the DOM cards. However, not all SSD modules are the same. Some SSD modules are different size and different shape. So the compatibility to fit on the storage drive would technically be incompatible. Now that that's out of the way, let's disassemble the SSD. This SSD does not use any screws but clips. Just of a side note here, I did this off camera since when I tried to remove the case of the SSD on camera, I literally had a very hard time to do so. I even watched an Indian YouTuber who removed a similar SSD that I have in less than 30 seconds. While well, I took 5 minutes to remove the SSD, but anywho. I am not going on too much detail on how to remove it, but basically what I did is start from the corner of the SSD case and pry it and work around the case. Now, do be very careful when doing this process as we do not want to damage the module of the SSD. Once you remove the casing of the SSD, take out the module from the casing and behold we have what we want. Let's start installing the SSD to the storage slot. The storage slot is located on the top right, almost close to the back I.O. ports. This is where we want to install our SSD module. To install it, just insert the SSD module to the storage slot. As you can see in the video, the module is a little bit too small to screw it as the original storage came with the machine was a bit bigger. However, as long as the SSD module is not making any contact with the motherboard or loose, then we should be fine. In my case, the SSD is pretty much tight. 
and it's making contact with the plastic screw holder, so I should be fine. Next, let's start by upgrading the RAM. But in order to do this, we must remove the whole RAM. Using your both thumbs, spread apart the clips on each end of the RAM, like shown in the video. The RAM itself will lift slash pop up, and from there we can remove the RAM. Ah yes, 2 gigabytes of RAM. What can you do with 2 gigabytes nowadays? Anywho, to install our RAM again, simply align the RAM stick with the RAM slot, slide the RAM to the slot firmly, and then press the RAM down. You should hear a click when installing it. FYI, the massive gigabytes of RAM the machine can be upgraded is only 4 gigabytes of RAM. We are almost done with the upgrades, ladies and gentlemen, so hang on tight. Since I'm done with the upgrade process, it is time to install the top panel back in place. To do this, simply align the top panel clips to the frame and slide the panel backwards, and screw the top panel in place. The last thing to do on this machine is to install the USB Wi-Fi dongle. Opening up the package, you have the Wi-Fi antenna, the USB receiver, and the CD driver for the Wi-Fi dongle, which you may or may not use. This is a very simple installation, so follow along. Simply screw the antenna to the USB receiver, and plug the USB to your desired location, either at the front of the I.O. ports or at the back I.O. ports. For my preference, I prefer to put at the back. As for drivers, if you have Windows 10 or 8.1, drivers will be automatically installed without the need of internet and the CD. So there you have it ladies and gentlemen. I hope you learned something today on this machine as finding videos and information about this machine is quite rare. But hopefully this video did help you a bit. Well, it was a bit worse, but hey, can't say anything about it. But until next time.